Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. The Southeast Business Innovation Centre is hosting a pitching competition for startup and scale up companies across the region. Aidan Shine is the CEO of CBIC and he joins me now to tell us more about the competition. Aidan, it's been 12 months since you joined me on the show. So how has the last year been for CBIC and the companies that you work with? Yeah, like I suppose like everybody else, Carl, it's been a, a very, very strange time. And um, inside internally here in the BIC, our team moved a, a remote working experience and showed great enthusiasm and energy throughout that period to, to offer our services. In terms of the clients we're working with, again, these companies, there are still uh, entrepreneurs out there and startups that are going for it, trying to start up their businesses and showing great resilience themselves in, in the time, the challenging times that we're in. So it's been a challenging year, but a very encouraging one. There's still lots of activity out there in the startup scene. Um, obviously, some sectors doing better than others. Um, but hopefully now we're seeing the end of the pandemic or we're finding a way to work through it and we'll see another generation of entrepreneurs and startups come forward in the, in the coming months as well. And while the pandemic was extremely challenging for companies across many sectors, it was extremely challenging for those starting out in business. Yeah, very much so. In in terms of, there was lots of things, I think, in terms of building a team and recruiting people, uh, doing everything remotely. Um, it was very challenging in trying to get in front of customers. There wasn't that traditional access maybe of of getting in front of a customer, selling what you have or outlining what services you provide. So again, we saw a lot of migration towards remote working and remote access to these types of of, of, of customers, and I must say again, it's it was it's it's a different way of doing it. But the good entrepreneurs and the good startups found ways around it. CBIC run the Halo Business Angel Network here in the southeast. So, from an investment perspective, what was the appetite like from investors during the pandemic? Yeah, it was it was very interesting. Um, and again, I use this word remote quite a lot, but it, it was fascinating in that we saw the engagement levels from our network of investors increase during the pandemic in that there was online access to the opportunities that presented themselves. So we saw a good appetite. We've seen plenty of activity. Investments are still taking place. Um, earlier on in the pandemic, I suppose there was a bit of uncertainty as to what was going to happen. And we saw that maybe deals were taking a bit longer to get over the line. But as we went through the pandemic, so there were deals done with, with companies and investors who had never met face-to-face, for example, which in the past would have been considered very, very unusual. Um, so it was it was continue on as, as pretty much as normal, albeit remotely. So we're very happy with the activity levels from both the companies and our investors. And are you finding that as a result of the pandemic that when investors are now evaluating investment and business opportunities, that they're now considering, is this business pandemic proof? Yeah, that is interesting, I suppose. And it's it's one that, and it's very personal to a lot of people, there are still business models that work, whether there's a pandemic or not. But definitely there's a factor now of, oh, OK, if something like this was to happen again, how would how would this business cope with that? So yeah, definitely that discussion or that question gets gets asked. Um, what's the business model like? What's the route to market like? Who? What is the customer profile? So yeah, it's very much so that this has added or did add maybe that extra layer of uncertainty to everything. But as I said, solid business models, uh, solid revenue models, they they always shine anyway, and they shine through and and they get the investment. From your insights, Aidan, particularly what sectors are investors most interested in at present? In fairness, that hasn't changed much. I think there was a lot initially during when COVID kind of hit first. There was there was a burst of um, ideas around, you know, hygiene and, and that, that medical area. And that kind of tailed off a little bit because a lot of the bigger companies came in with solutions, I suppose. So it's still the traditional ones of uh, IT, food, and life sciences, the ones that are still attracting the, the, the attention. Here in the southeast, I suppose our network of investors take a, a broader view and they're just looking at opportunities maybe primarily based in the southeast, though not exclusively so, and looking at the team and the opportunity and, and seeing does it solve a particular problem. 
The Halo Business Angel Network nationally was calling on the Department of Finance to increase the limits when it came to entrepreneurs' relief. That was based on the fact that in the UK, they had a threshold of up to 10 million. But as a result of the pandemic, the UK have brought theirs way back, almost in line with Ireland now. So is there any possibility at this point that in the foreseeable future, we could expect to see an increase in that threshold? Well, we would. We HBAN are continually lobbying for this. It's been uh, something that we've been doing for quite a number of years. And who knows? We'll just we'll just keep at it and and keep getting the message put out there to government that this needs to be looked at. Um, and it, in terms of it did, I know what you said about the UK there, but it it brought it home to us when we used to operate the network in the 26 counties, but then. Uh, three years ago became an all-island body and then it really hit home the differences between the two jurisdictions. So it's something that, yeah, we continue to lobby government on and hopefully um, it can be looked at uh, in in the future. The deadline for the big pitch 2021 is next Monday, November 8th. What is the big pitch all about, Aidan? What we're trying to do here is is trying to see within the region what are the good startups or scale-ups or entrepreneurs that are out there with some, some ideas so what it is basically is it's it's online again this year. It's not it's not in person, um, and basically it's it's uh, we'll we'll filter down all applicants to three uh, startups or scale ups or good entrepreneurs uh, that really impress us, and we'll get them to pitch in front of a virtual audience and a panel of judges. Um, and what we're looking for here is is like a, it's a spark. Uh, is there a is it a good idea? Is there a big problem being solved? Uh, what's the background of the promotion? What do all these ingredients go in to make a good pitch? Uh, and basically, we're just trying to see what the Southeast has to offer currently in terms of some good startups that are out there. Because last year's winner, for example, went on post the, the, the big pitch, and uh, they've just um, announced the closure of a 1.15 million uh, investment deal there recently. So, not because they did the big pitch, but you can <laughs> see that. It's it kind of it, we, we were just to see trawl the the region. See, let's let's celebrate what what's good in the region in terms of entrepreneurship. And are there any eligibility criteria for entrepreneurs or businesses that want to take part? No, there's a technical one. You can't be older than five years old. But yeah, any startup or scale up, who's basically what we're looking for is companies or startups that are based in the southeast. Uh, so that's Waterford, Wexford, Carlow, Kilkenny, and Tip, who are ambitious and have plans for. Uh, a global market, so that they're, they're solving a, a big a big problem. That's ideally what we want to see. And apart from coming up with a solution to a big problem globally, what else will the judging panel be looking for in the pitches? Yeah, so what what we're, we're the judging panel, I think, will be looking for, you know, a good a good energetic pitch. Um, is the problem easily defined? Is there is the solution matching that problem? What's the promoter? What's the team like? What's their background? Do they have knowledge, domain knowledge of this sector? So it's, it's a complete kind of package and how it looks. Now, it's only a four-minute pitch at the end of the day, um, four-minute pitch and then a four-minute Q&A. But in four minutes, you get a strong feel for what the promoter is 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 is, is um, promoting it within the within the pitch. I've often heard it being said that investors will look at the team first and the product or service mm. afterwards. And it's often a problem, Aidan, isn't it, where an entrepreneur comes along and they're passionate about a particular service they want to provide and they have a technical skill set, but they may not have a sales and marketing and finance skill set and mightn't have anyone on the team that does. Absolutely. And, and sometimes... An investor will look at that and say, okay, this person really knows the insides and outsides of this technical and if I technical issue and if I put in some money into this, maybe I can give them some hand holding around the softer business issues like the marketing, as you say, finance or contacts and networks. And that's why angel money is so important. We call it smart investment. So and sometimes it's it's better for uh, in in a pitch like that to say yes. This is what we're good at, and these are the weaknesses, and this is what we need investment for, for example, uh, to buy in those skills that we don't currently have in-house uh, to build out the team. So there's nothing wrong with saying that either, um, rather than trying to bluff your way through the presentation, pretending that you know all aspects of what you're trying to trying to achieve. That's for sure. And Aidan, what's the prize that you'll be awarding to the overall winner of the Big Pitch 2021? Yeah, so there's, there's a first prize, a cash prize of €2,000, uh, hopefully with some sponsorship next year we'll be able to increase that um, and then the runner-up will get an iPad an iPad um, Air 
Uh, and then there's other bits and pieces like um, access to our offices here in in the BIC and consultancy with our consultants in the BIC as well for for whatever period of time they need it. The application deadline date is this coming Monday, November 8th. So if any of our listeners are interested in participating in the big pitch, what do they need to do? So basically you can log on to southeastbic.ie, that's southeastbic.ie. Uh, it's the top of the news section there, you'll see it. And there's a very uh, short and simple application form there. So we'd encourage anybody out there with, with a good idea, with a good business to fill that out and get it into us by next Monday. And Aidan, finally, CBIC operates the Southeast Halo Business Angel Network and you have a network of investors that are based across the Southeast. Are you looking for new investors at the moment? And if so, what credentials are you looking for in them? Yeah, no, we're always looking, uh, Carl, for new members for our network, always looking to, to freshen it up, to get new members in, get new blood in. And basically what we're looking for is individuals that are looking for an opportunity to invest uh, money that they might like to invest in companies. Our part of the deal is that we work th- with the companies very, very closely. Uh, we prep them, get their pitches ready, their business plans ready, make sure their financials stack up, and then facilitate that introduction. And we do that uh, primarily via pitching sessions. So these are closed sessions where uh, companies are invited to pitch to our panel of, of investors. So if there's anybody out there that are, that's looking um, to 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 join the network or even come along and have a look at one of those uh, pitching sessions uh, we're doing virtually at the moment. Uh, feel free to reach out to me here, Aidan Shine at, at Southeast Big or A Shine at Southeast Big. That is my email address, um, and we we'll gladly talk them through the process. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Aidan Shine, the CEO of CBIC, and I would certainly encourage the local startup and scale up entrepreneurs to apply for the Big Pitch competition. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.